Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to my preview of Unrest. Unrest is a kind of dialogue-heavy, choice-based adventure game that takes place within a fantasy, fictional India. It features quite a few characters, and supposedly your choices really affect their outcome in life. So we start this game out, and we are an heir to a... kingdom? It's kind of a very much princess maker situation, but a little bit more played straight. Princess. Naive. So this guy, if you open your journal, he's a father's brother. And if you look through here, we have some tabs giving kind of fluff. This game and explaining the situation, like we got signed some treaty with the Naga Empire. I guess it was a quest too? Something like that. I'm gonna just gonna click through these. You're welcome to pause the video if you want to read them. Let's see our options here. It's not that scary. Let's be rebellious, just because it just seems kind of out of character for a naive princess. And it comes off strong. Can I be there for them in here? Or can we just have the treaty side in here? So they have a big slums issue. And famine. Let's be critical, because I'm going to try to be a really smart princess. But I thought people didn't even like the treaty. Isn't that just going to make them more angry? So slums don't like the treaty. But they basically want the trade to elevate their slums problem. So it's like an economic trade-off thing. Who's this guy? Your father's constant advisor. He's gonna go out and wave. But we're not listening. We're signing the treaty anyway. Pretty much the same dialogue as the other guy. Do you think this treaty is a bad idea? People are scared of the Naga. He's kind of concerned, I guess, about the reaction? I don't know. Nobody really explains anything to me. Even you don't. See, when I chose that, when I acted more critical, his respect went up for me. So now he's at least appreciative. Now we're playing as a new character. I believe there's at least five different characters you play as. Let's see. We're an ambassador to the Naga Empire, and the Naga Empire is very literal. Because we are apparently actually a Naga. Great seasoned. Maria's mentor. You'll see this tactic all the time. They're pretending they control the situation. And since we're talking between each other, I think we'll just act suspicious. If I had to guess, I'd say that's what's happening. Yes. I figure if I'm an experienced diplomat, I gotta be a little... colder? Gonna cut the bullshit out, per se. And make them respect us, yes. 
and maybe fear us just a little. Traits, same thing. Oh, actually, I didn't look at this. Do you have like an item tab? I have no idea what this actually is for, if it's just fluff or not. Basically, you're trading food for their precious metals and things like that. And we want to be able to send in professional immigrants. Jewelry? Self defense. <laughs> so in that hand. Well, let's go mingle with a few locals. I'm not going to mingle with all of them, just to keep this thing going. But let's pick an interesting one here. Just slipping it along. S -s Very awkwardly, slowly slivering up these stairs, don't mind me. I seem to have forgotten a subtlety of Prima's social structure. So pretty much, they follow that business. Gotta speak to the husband first. Usually when people see a big snake, they go at it with speed. And when we see a talking monkey, we usually put the jug down. See, I like that. A little bit of a joke. It's a long way. Uh, I wonder about this option. Can I have... Oh, plenty by human standards. We have to eat more, too. Can we be too friendly? Eh, uh, whatever. I'll take you up on that. He likes me more. But he's a prick. I don't think that kind of treatment for women. Awkwardly say, you, you too? Or straightforward to the point? <laughs> it's just dropping here. I just... Sure. <sighs> If you want to make enemies in this country fast, just remind them that you're a woman, apparently. I need a disarming trait. I don't know if the traits actually do anything, or if they're just kind of a roleplay thing to kind of point out how you're playing, but... Hmm. Still not arriving yet, huh? Stern. I'm a giant snake. I think I can afford to act a little bit stern. I think people really don't want to fuck with you. Especially when you have some kind of trait there that you can disable humans with your claws. Hmm. So, Priest hates the Naga. Telling everyone that we suck, and that we're losers. And that we also cause droughts. This is troubling. For our refugees and for the immigrants who will be arriving within the month. Hired mercenaries. The funny thing is, they, they're suspicious of the Naga. But usually Naga and snakes in general are... kind of put at a higher tier... in, uh... Asian religion and, uh, myth. Hmm. 
Of course. You gotta be polite enough to at least give a bow. Not a grand bow. That's ass kissing. King is straight to the point. Wouldn't mind still at least doing the food tasting. Probably poison though. That is the best part, yes. See, he just likes being friendly. He wants to cut the, uh... I think I've already used his turn. Cut the bullshit out. Nice change of pace for diplomacy. We're here to discuss the term of the contract. So we will settle that first. Concerned about our immigrants taking their jerubs? 100 merchants, craftsmen, and skilled laborers over the next month. What seems to be the problem? And like I said, pretty much worried about us taking their jerubs. The snake people are just apparently sound much awesome. And they have a... <laughs> Crumbling job market. Just be reassuring. Our trade will make your city and our merchants here rich. The economy will be restored. Ford Stern. I'm tempted to do this? Because I don't think they have a choice considering they're starving. But this works out. Since you're still getting what you want, just not quite. You will take half now. The rest can come later. How are you addressing the situation? Just avoid fear of the Naga. Priest. I think the priest is actually one of the playable characters. So that kind of shows you how all the playable characters are not aligned. So you're kind of opposing a little bit and kind of guiding them around. And what has he learned? To end the drought, we've got to shun the snake people. That'll save us. I see. So he has a problem needing a solution. Every option's bold. Mmm, no. I don't know about this one. Exiles. This... this... I think if in a real life situation you had this happen, turning the followers against someone or is usually the common trick. Killing makes them a martyr. Exile can make someone a martyr, as I know from Thailand. And uh So this is pretty much it. You gotta turn the people against him. Might as well be helpful because our own people are at stake. The Nog Empire can give you extra resources for the duration of this fret. It seems appropriate. Considering we have plenty of resources, apparently. Mercenaries. Let's be doubtful. Never be easy. I wouldn't trust mercenaries with so crucial a task. Hmm. I'm, I'm curious what happens if I play this one. It will actually affect the decision. 
This sounds unwise. Perhaps refugees could be brought here. these two, I think. Alright. Sorry, prudent. This one sounds kind of snarky, but I kind of like it. Rhea, I'm retiring. This was a last outing for me, but I don't want it to be my final outing if you follow. So the deal was signed late that night. Two months later, a Naga representative will venture out with the royal family the court spy. Only... Mercenaries and then we return. So, mercenaries couldn't be trusted. I don't know if my character would have died if he went with him. I don't think so. That's not the one they're referring to when they say two months later, not a representative. Now I'm a peasant girl, Tanya. Gonna be married? I'm intelligent? Only child? Loner. And I feel like I have to be a smug person. No wonder you and my mother get along. I've never been unfriendly to anybody. If they don't like me much, that's their problem. Gotta keep the status quo. Hmm. That's never good news. If I'd known, I would have stayed hidden. Is agreeable. Why, yes. Promising start. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everyone in this village knows Hanu is a stupid, foul tempered Cretan. Why did it have to be him? Uh, she got pissed off on that. So what? I'm supposed to thank you for revolving me to the most unlike boy in the village. So just life in the country. Resentful. What's my inventory? Old wooden elephant. Earrings. I have all coins. So here's our. Honey, 
you sound so disappointed. I know, I'm not eager about this either. Oh, okay. You wanna be like that? Okay. How about the fact that you're clearly an ass? Same here. I don't care what his circumstances are. Hunter is pure poison. You're in denial. What are you even saying? Why don't you come out with it? Who's he? This is interesting. Huh. Be that as may, I need to talk to you. You're a little girl, but why do you sound like a grown man? Don't question it. Lovely. Oh, that's a great family. Let's go work out. So I just snuck in my telling I'm gonna do the laundry. And we're gonna go and steal everything and get out of this damn city. Dalry. Don't mind me. Gotta beat all on my own. So that's it for my preview of Unrest. Unrest is a very particular type of game. And I would say it's not for everyone. If you're the kind of person who grew up on old school games who are very text heavy and had some choices and dynamics and stuff like that, then you'd probably enjoy this type of game. Um, if you're looking for like a very story based visceral game, this is not your kind of thing. If you're also looking for something that has a lot of stat points and kind of grinding and dynamics like that, like Princess Maker or those games, this is also not your kind of game. Like I said, this is for a person who enjoys a uh, old-school text-based RPG or text-based adventure game. And in that re retrospect, it does what it wants to do pretty well. And it's, at least it's kind of a unique setting that you don't see often at all, if not ever. So I say it's certainly worth a try if you're interested in that kind of game. And while the first two parts had very little decisions, I definitely noticed when I got to the Peasant Girl there was a lot of different ways I could have handled that. Like, I left my the things I stole behind, which made that whole stealing completely worthless, and I just took off on the horse. But I'm sure there's some other options like sticking around, and maybe stealing stuff and taking with you, so you can have a better chance in the next part. So it seems like it'd be kind of a fun game to kind of roleplay and screw around in. Anyway, so, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.